So today on What The Heck Is Ben gonna be making on the Bait Making Channel, we are gonna be making a finesse style craw jig trailer. And this is something that I use a ton in the springtime, early ice out when those fish are kind of lethargic and finicky and they're tough to get to go. I really like to use a finesse style jig with a more do nothing style trailer. And the mold that we're gonna be using is Do It Molds Eye Craw. This is a super realistic crawfish style mold and it's a great jig trailer or great just to go on the back of a little jig head and drag around the bottom. It gets a lot of bites, super, super realistic and it's a really cool little cross style mold. And what's really cool about this is the plastic that we're using, which is the Essential Series plastic from Do It, it floats. So when this is on the back of a jig head, those claws stand up, it looks really natural, and you can make it look just like a little crawfish scooting around there on the bottom. Now, what makes this so cool, like I already kind of mentioned, was that this is something I'm gonna be able to apply right now. I'm gonna be able to make these baits, put them in my boat, and fish them in the springtime. This is one of those baits that's gonna work when the water's really heavily pressured or those fish are really lethargic they're not looking to move a lot and the water's colder they want something they can just kind of key in on come up behind slowly drag it around look super natural and they can eat it so this eye craw is a really cool ultra realistic craw style bait that you can put on the back of a jig or a little jig head and just drag it around and get a bunch of bites on so what we're going to be using for this is obviously the essential series plastisol but we're going to be making sort of a brown amberish style bait with red and black flake. The motor oil, which is gonna be our base colorant, this is really what's gonna give the bait most of the color. Sort of an amber greenish style of color. Really, really cool. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of watermelon brown to kind of deepen it and bring out more of the browns in the motor oil. Then we're gonna be using 0 0.040 black flake and 0 0.040 red flake. Both medium sized flake. I wanna give this a little bit more red in that bait as well. Um, and that red's really gonna stand out it's kind of like a springtime magic color. Everyone knows that red is an awesome springtime color. So the red 0.040 is gonna look awesome in this eye craw. But enough of me talking, let's kind of get to bait making and I'm gonna take you guys through this process right now. One of the struggles that I was originally having with the bait making channel was making baits when it's really, really cold. But I found if I put a little griddle here where I can put my mold and heat up my injector prior to shooting the baits, I can actually keep it warm enough and get it warm enough where the baits shoot smoothly, even when it is a little bit colder. Um, you still need to have a little bit warmer weather in the garage to kind of keep that plastic soft. Otherwise it hardens up too quick, which is why we're able to get back into it. Now that the weather's starting to break, you're in the 40s and 50 degree range, um, making it a little bit nicer to even be in the garage and making baits. But now we're gonna pour the plastisol and get this started heated up. First things first, as always, shake up, mix that plastic salt, get it really mixed and shaken up. Then I'm going to be pouring about a cup of plastic. This mold doesn't take much plastic and with about a cup you can shoot about 8 to 10 craws. So pour in there just about a cup of the plastic salt. You're good to go. And we're going to start this thing off with a cool three minutes and I'll catch you guys back here in a second. So now that the plastic is about 360 degrees, I'm going to add the plastisol colorant. So like I mentioned, this motor oil is really going to be the base of this color. It's like an amber with a green hue to it. So fairly liberal, just kind of pour a decent bit in there and then stir this in. It sort of looks brown on the knife, but it's more of like an amber greenish the way it actually comes out. So we're going to take that watermelon brown and just add a few drops to that. And that's just going to kind of bring out some of those other colors in there and add a little bit of this black. I add a decent bit of black. It's just going to give that bait more texture. This plastic starting to thicken on me. So it's getting hard to stir it in. So what we're gonna do is actually heat this up again so we can mix in the red. You can start to see that that black flake is pretty much perfect in there. And we're gonna add just a little bit of red, about a quarter tablespoon, maybe just a little bit less, because that's just gonna be an accent color in this bait. Just to kind of add a little bit of red hue. Red is such a good color, especially in the springtime. You know what? It doesn't stand out quite enough. 
I'm gonna add about, I don't know, maybe an eighth, a sixteenth of a tablespoon more, just to give it a little bit more red in that bait. And as I'm mixing it in, you guys can kind of see, maybe. Get it up to that 360 degree mark. I like to go a little bit above the 350, 360, 370 degrees right now. Since it's so cold, I want it to shoot into that mold clean. The mold's still on the griddle, but that means it's gonna be ready by the time that this plastic is done. You guys can see there's another look at the eye craw before we shoot it. Take my clamps. 365 which is pretty much perfect like i said i'm gonna heat it up a little bit above the 350 right now since it's so cold out draw it up it's not going to take very much plastic to fill this mold because it's a single shoot shoot it in top it off shoot the rest of your plastic back into your mix and now we gotta wait because it is such a thick bait, it's gonna take a second for that to really cool in there. But you guys can sort of get a look at what that bait's gonna look like. Sort of that amber greenish, quite a bit of black flake, and then just a little bit of red. It's gonna look really, really good when it's all said and done. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit interested to see how this turns out. This is a color combination I've never done before but I was thinking of some way to come up with a spring craw kind of color. And as you can see on that sprue there, it's looking pretty good, but we're gonna open it up and actually see what the bait looks like now. Moment of truth. Oh, that's a good looking craw color right there. That is really good looking. It's sort of a deeper amber or deeper dark melon color than I thought it would be. But that red shows up really good. I thought there was gonna to be too much black flake. That looks super, super good. Not only for the springtime, but you can fish this pretty much all year long. That looks so nice. Your little tentacles, those legs, and then those really realistic craw pinchers. It's just a really good looking craw bait. And that's going in the water bath. So while we're waiting on that one, here's another close up look at that bait without any gloves on. Super realistic looking craw profile. It looks really good. You have these really natural craw looking pinchers, ribbed craw body. The underbody looks super natural. You have the, where the legs connect to the body underneath. And it's just super natural. Like I mentioned, when this thing is in the water, because this is that essential series plastic, it does float. It does lift up off the bottom. It sort of takes on this defensive posture when it's on a jig head or on the back of a jig, these claws and this whole body want to kind of stand up and lift up off the back of that jig. And so it looks super natural, but the colors that we've chosen with that red and that black flake, they're gonna make it pop, they're gonna make it stand out. And then that springtime, that red really is the deal. So all you have to do is pop the sprue off and you have a perfect looking, super natural, realistic 3D style craw ready to go bait number two is ready to go so we're gonna pop the clamps off a drum roll please and another perfect pour we opened it upside down but that's okay and there you have a very realistic craw looking bait so i keep sort of telling you guys where i see this playing but this is really the jig that i imagine pairing this up with this is a finesse style jig with a living rubber and flashaboo skirt and it's a really good finesse springtime presentation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this craw, the eye craw, and I'm gonna bite it off, I don't know, about a half an inch down the bait. So I am going to take it down just a little bit to shorten up that trailer because this is a small three out hook on this jig. And when I'm fishing a lot of these river systems for smallmouth in the spring, I'm gonna be using a more finesse style jig, especially ice out. Then I'm gonna thread this up on there this is going to be the overall end presentation so it's a small profile jig really really natural looking craw style trailer that eye craw and then you have that living rubber skirt which is going to breathe and move and it looks super natural it's a finesse presentation i can flip it into cover i can drag it along the gravel and shell bars that are down there in the river and i can catch a bunch of fish on this thing but it looks really good it's going to catch a bunch of fish for me this spring and that's exactly how I'm going to use this thing. And so for number three, 
try to open it up the right way this time. Voila, there you have it. I craw in its natural habitat. No, for real though, it looks so good. My only complaint, I just wish they were bigger molds so I could shoot more of them one at a time, but man, it looks so good. You can't complain. So now for the final count, out of one cup of plastic, how many craws, how many eye craws did we get? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine craws out of one cup of plastic, which is pretty good. That doesn't include any of these sprues, any of the plugs that were out of the injector. So you probably could have got 10, 12, probably about 12 or 13 craws if you would have melted the remelts and taken the time to kind of cook down all of these plugs and everything, which is really, really good. For a cup of plastic, you get about 12 craws that look really good and are gonna work perfect on the back of a jig, a ball head, even a little Ned rig head in the spring. So I kind of want to end this video with my impressions on the iCraw mold, because like I mentioned throughout, this is a really cool mold. You get a super realistic ultra 3D style crawfish, but to me, this is an all season bait. This for me is one of those baits that I'm going to throw when things get tough, when there's a lot of pressure on a lake, when the lake is really cold and these fish are lethargic or you're fishing after a cold front, kind of those really tough times that you want to be out there fishing and you still want to have a shot at catching some fish. But once that water warms up when I'm looking for that bigger kind of bulkier presentation I'm going to go to something other than the iCraw but this is a great mold when you're looking for that 3D realistic craw imitation on the back of a jig head on the back of a Ned rig and even on the back of a little finesse jig like I showed you guys right here it's going to be a great little partner or presentation that you guys can take to the water and it's going to catch some fish um, super super stoked on the way this color came out like I mentioned it was a motor oil base with that watermelon brown and then some red and black medium 0 0.040 flake turn out really really cool um, going to be a great springtime craw style color another time that i'm going to be able to use a color similar to this is going to be in the middle of the summertime but i'm going to replace that red flake with some green flake i'm just really stoked on the eye craw it's a really cool mold it pours really nice but it is a single shoot mold and what that means is you can only pour one at a time it is slow but you can get a bunch of baits out of one mold and uh, they look really, really good. So if you guys haven't checked out the iCraw mold, I'm gonna leave a link to that down in the description below, as well as all of the other components that I used in this video. But if you have any questions or comments, or there's certain things you guys wanna see in upcoming videos, hit me up in the comment section. I have a video coming up where I'm gonna be melting down some plastics from a subscriber. I have a video coming up where I'm gonna talk about wire tying jig skirts and chatterbait skirts and buzzbait skirts and why I do that and how I do that. And just some other really cool videos, some that are super specific, some that are not, and some that are just gonna be fun like color matches. But if you guys have anything you guys wanna see, hit me up in the comment section. If you guys enjoy this style of video, if you guys enjoy the bait making channel, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. Let's keep growing this thing and I'll catch you guys here on the next episode.